Hey, thanks for attending this webinar. Today we're going to talk about the USDA Guaranteed Mortgage Loan Program, and it's a great way to get into your first home with zero money down. Who am I? Uh, I'm Brad Fay, the owner of True Home Mortgage. I've been a mortgage originator for 17 years. I'm licensed in all of Pennsylvania. I'm a member of the Realtors Association, the Mortgage Bankers Associate or Mortgage Brokers Association. I'm a Zillow lender partner. I've owned True Home Mortgage for 10 years and I close about 10 to 12 million dollars in mortgages per year. So why this webinar? Well, we want to educate as many people as possible about this program and help people buy homes. When our clients are educated, it makes the whole process easier and smoother. And we feel that after you are educated and ready to buy, you will want to do business with us. So stay until the end and we have a special promotion that can save you up to $550 off your closing costs. And we'll show you how to get a free pre-approval without any obligation. So what's the goal of the USDA? The USDA program is designed to provide low and moderate income house, households the opportunity to own adequate, modest, decent, safe housing. And the program provides loan guarantees to an approved lender so that the lender is able to lend 100% financing. So the loan program itself for the borrower, it's a 30-year fixed mortgage. The rate is set by the lender and not USDA. The lender is required to escrow your taxes and insurance. So what that means is when you make your monthly payment, your one-twelfth of your annual taxes and insurance is going into your mortgage payment and you'll build up your own escrow account and then the lender will pay those bills every year for you. There's no money down. The seller can even pay for the closing costs. And you could, that way it enables a lot of our clients to get into a new home without any money out of pocket. And we'll show you some case studies. There are income limits and property location requirements. So the program is for moderate income borrowers and each county in Pennsylvania has an income limit. For example, in Center County, in the middle of the state, where, we're, where we are located, the income limit for the household of up to four people is $84,650. So that means two parents, two kids, household of four, they can't have an income, combined income, more than $84,650. And the property must be located in a rural area. That means it has to be outside of any large city or urban area and you can look at you can look up properties online we'll show you where to go for that as well i mentioned before the seller can pay the closing cost there is a limitation they can pay up to six percent of the sales price towards closing costs so if you think about how that would work if a sales price was a hundred thousand dollars and you were putting no money down, so you'd, you'd have a loan of $100,000. The closing cost might be five or six or $7,000 to buy that $100,000 home. But the seller's allowed to give you a credit of 6% of the sales price. So they could give a credit of $6,000 that would go towards your closing costs. Now this is negotiated through the sales agreement and your realtor could help you negotiate this. And some closing costs can also be paid by the lender in the form of a lender credit. Um, both can be used in combination to help you with the closing costs. Real estate commission and things like that are not counted in that 6%. You must occupy the property, so you can't use this program to buy a rental property. You have to occupy within 60 days and live in the property. Um, when to qualify for the loan, you must have stable and dependable income. So there's no minimum amount of time that you need to hold a full-time job, but we need to show two years of, of employment, stable employment. Now, if you have a gap in that two years, it can be for a legit, legitimate unemployment 
uh, reason, maybe a health situation, you got laid off temporarily and you got a new job before you applied, obviously, um, that would be okay. And also if you were going to school for a profession like a nurse uh, or a doctor or a teacher and you were in school, uh, we can count those years of school towards your total two years of, it, of employment. And this is where I, I just touched on that. So a new, newly employed person, let's just say you're a new teacher or a new nurse, some other professional field, we can use the schooling that you had towards that two-year employment history. Credit, uh, you must have established credit for this program, um, three trade lines and 12 month history is preferred. And that way we're able to validate a credit score uh, of 640. And when you have a 640 credit score, it makes things a lot easier and uh, you cannot have any foreclosures within the last three years, any bankruptcies in the last three years or late payments uh, or rent, rent or mortgage payments in the last three years. Uh, if you have a credit score of 680 and above, uh, the program's a little more flexible where we don't verify rent history. Um, we use an automated underwriting system called Gus to help us with those decisions. And if you do have a credit score below 680, we just need 12 months rent verified by your, by your landlord. And we independently go out and verify that. Debt ratios, how, this is another part of the qualifying process. The debt ratios are manually figured out by the underwriter. We figure it out ahead of time. And that would be 29% of your PITI, that means principal, interest, taxes, and insurance. So 29% of your income um, is limited to going to your mortgage payment. And then a total debt ratio of 41%. So that means of your income, no more than 41% can go towards all of your debt. So for example, if you have an income of $4,500 a month, you have a sales price and a mortgage amount of 175, the approximate PITI or principal interest taxes and insurance for that house would be $1,200. So that would be a debt to income ratio of 26. So that would be under the 29, you'd be okay there. And let's just say you had another $500 in loan payments, such as a car or student loan, something like that, credit card. If you had total debt of 1,800, including your mortgage payment, you'd be at 40% debt to income ratio and you'd be okay there as well because you'd be under the 41%. The property and the appraisal, the property has to be um, within the standards of the local or state government it has to be typical for size and the site. That means the size of the lot um, needs to be typical for the area. So that means uh, basically a regular stick built home on a regular size lot. That's the best type of property that you can buy and, and use this program for. The alternative, the property that you can't buy with this program would be a small little tiny house on a giant acreage like 30 or 40 acres with a little house on it. That would be really hard to get uh, financing for a property like that. Uh, look back up there. The home must meet the standards of an FHA appraisal. And what that means is uh, you may elect to do a home inspection where they check um, the electricity, check the roof, check for termites and pests and things like that. The FHA appraisal is gonna check and look at uh, any peeling paint, missing handrails. Hand rails. They're gonna look at the roof and if it's visibly in good shape or not. And if those things are, if, it, if there are peeling paint or missing handrails or a roof that looks visibly out of shape, those all those things would be need to be repaired prior to closing. Doesn't mean you can't buy the house, just means you need to repair that prior to closing. You can't, you, even though this program's called the USDA, um, it is part of the USDA agency for agriculture, although this property, this program is for residential properties. So you can't actually go out and buy a farm with this property. 
So no income producing properties and no income producing land. So you can't, again, can't go out and buy a farm or something like that with this property, with this program. Um, in ground pools are okay. So you can have an out of ground pool or an in ground pool. That's okay. Um, your, this program does allow the loan to be in a flood zone, although flood insurance is expected, is expensive and you want to double check all the costs of that, but it is allowed by the USDA if your property isn't in a flood zone, as long as you have the federal insurance, uh, federal flood insurance program in place. Property does not allow mobile homes or manufactured homes. So a lot of people ask us, you know, we found a great you know, home we're interested in, no money down, can you finance a mobile home or a manufactured double wide? No, we cannot do that with the USDA program. So how do you find out if the property is eligible? It's really easy. I'll show you a screenshot. You just go out and Google search. I always type in USDA eligibility and I'll show you how to do that here. Okay, so here's how you find out if a property is eligible for the USDA program. You want to go out to Google, type USDA eligibility. You can even actually make that uh, property eligibility. It'll even get more specific. And you sh that should come up at the first or second um, link here. And when you see .gov, USDA.gov, you know that's the real site. So it takes you here to these um, single family guaranteed link and then property eligibility underneath that. So you'll have a, some options here across the top. You wanna go to single family housing guaranteed. There's other programs, but that's not what we're talking about today. This is the one we're talking about over here, single family housing guaranteed and then property eligibility. I went out on Zillow and found a property that um, looked interesting to me. It looks like it qualifies. So what you do is type the whole address in there and hit go. This is an interactive map and it'll tell you how to put a little pin there and it'll say this address is located in an eligible area. So you know this whole area is eligible for USDA. You can zoom out and move around the map and you can see Jersey Shore is close to Williamsport, Pennsylvania. And this area is orange. And that means anywhere in this orange area is not going to be eligible because it's considered urban or um, metropolitan. So it's not considered rural. So you can see this is the city of Williamsport. And you could not use USDA in this orange area. But if you type the address in, and it's out of that orange area, it'll be okay. And it'll also give you a little um, pin to show you that it is okay. Um, income eligibility. So I talked about Center County being 84,650. Um, if you click on income limits, it's gonna ask you to open up a PDF and you just wanna say yes. And you can search uh, by county in all of the United States, we're going to focus on Pennsylvania. And again, it's an interactive map. It's a PDF file. You click on Pennsylvania and it'll bring you down to Pennsylvania. So you could search all these different, these are the um, some areas like outside of Altoona, anywhere around Altoona is going to be these income limits. So you want to look at the moderate and in moderate income guaranteed loan line. So you can see a family of up to four people is 75,650 for any anywhere around Altoona. Then you have Erie, Gettysburg. These are sort of the bigger, bigger areas. Harrisburg, Johnstown, Lancaster, and State College. And then it gets into the counties themselves. So you could search by your county. And let's just pick Mifflin County. 
So you would say Mifflin County, moderate income, and you would scroll across, you can highlight that, and it'll say 75,650. And most of those counties are coming in at that 75,650. Now, if you have a family of five or more, that income limit goes up to 99,850 for this county, Northumberland County. And that's how you find everything so if you don't see your specific county here, then chances are you live near a bigger market or, and you would wanna go up and search one of these um, bigger markets. And as long as you're right outside of that market, then you would be eligible. So for State College, it's 84,650. Reading, PA, it would be 81,500. And Bedford, 75,650. So there you go, there's how you figure out your income. So let's look at a case study. We just had a client close this past October, 2016. There was a sales price, whoops, let me go back there. Sales price of 217, 217,000 in Ahrensburg, Pennsylvania. They had a rate, a fixed rate, 3.250 points. The seller paid all the closing costs, which was 6,000 towards closing, 6% towards closing costs. The buyer actually left closing with a check of $2,600. That's because he had his $2,000 deposit that he put down on the home um, and some home inspections that he already prepaid prior to closing. He was able to get all of that back because the seller was paying for all the closing costs. He even got his appraisal fee refunded. His total payment on this property was $1,263. And he so again, he had zero money out of his own pocket to get into this home. He did have some money up front, but he got it, got it back at closing. And um, if you would like, we can email you a sample closing disclosure for this property. Just send us an email. I'll show you the email at the end. Here's another case study. We had a closing in 2016, October again. Client of ours bought a pr property in Center Hall, Pennsylvania for 247, 30, 30 year fixed rate at three and a quarter. The seller paid 6% towards closing costs and the buyer left with his $1,000 check was returned to him since the seller was paying for all the closing costs. That $1,000 was an earnest money deposit that he put down on the home when he made an offer on the home and he also received his appraisal fee back. The total payment on a monthly basis for him is $1,469.74. Again, zero money to get into this home. Let us know if you'd like a sample closing disclosure. We block out the names and address of our client, but everything else you'll be able to see all the detailed closing costs. So how do you figure out your payment? It's really easy. Just go out to our uh, website and use the mortgage calculators and you can email us and ask us what the current rates are. We'll show you how to figure that all out so you can start calculating payments based on properties that you may see online. So we are running a special right now for everybody that watches this webinar and replies to us. If you get pre-approved and mention that you've seen this webinar in the next 48 hours. It's free to get pre-approved and there's no obligation to use us, but if you do use us for your mortgage, we will pay for your appraisal. So that's a savings of up to $550 and that'll help you negotiate um, on a property because your closing costs overall are gonna be less and that's less money that you need to ask the seller to help out with and that can help you get into your next home here in 2017. So again, you can save 500, I say actually even $550 um, because we're gonna pay for your appraisal if you apply in the next 48 hours. Um, we're really excited that you would get pre-approved with us and get into your first home this year with no money down and we look forward to working with you. Let us know if you have any questions. You can email us anytime at info at truehomemortgage.com. So any, uh, on a typical webinar, I would open it up for questions and answers. But for this video, I'm just gonna again mention, please email us at info 
at truehomemortgage.com or call my personal cell phone at 814-360-0505 and I can answer any questions you have about the loan program, about getting pre-approved, anything you'd like to ask us, we'd be happy to answer for you. So thanks again for watching this webinar. Again, if you have any questions, please email me at info at truehomemortgage.com or call my cell phone at 814-360-0505. Thanks a lot and look forward to hearing from you.